friends, Eric Badger here. I wanted to share a status update on the eBadger 6502. In the previous video, I was very close to getting LoadRunner working on my 6502 computer project. At that time, I had the VGA circuit working on breadboard. I sent off to JLC PCB with my new design. Well, here it is. The date on the solder mask is only off by a year. I designed and 3D printed a new case. It's now running LoadRunner very well and is very stable. To test and for fun, I've played up to level 81 with much cursing before succumbing to puzzle fatigue. Overall, I'm very happy with how it's turned out so far. I did and still do have an interesting challenge that I'd like to share. Apple II high-res video is 280 by 192 pixels and is composite video. I ported the Apple II version in part because I was able to get my hands on some disassembly, in part because of the major 8-bit machines, the Apple II seemed to have the simplest graphics hardware, and in part because Apple II is where LoadRunner started. My video boat is 320 by 192. To make porting as easy as possible, I really tried to copy the Apple II high-res mode. Technically I could do 320 by 240 QVGA, but I'm trimming scan lines to fit the Apple II high-res memory model. Uh, just like the Apple II, there are two 8K blocks of RAM for high-res video, starting at 0x2000 and 0x4000. Uh, the computer can be switched to displaying out of block 1 or block 2, and double buffering is possible. The computer reads from the memory in the same order that the Apple II does. Because of this, the LoadRunner graphics routines can remain largely unchanged. Apple screen res is 280 by 192 and outputs 7 pixels per byte of RAM. My screen res is 320 by 192 and outputs 8 pixels per byte of RAM. In the Apple high res mode, the top bit isn't displayed and is used as part of a timing scheme to control the NTSC composite color artifacting. You can see the problem here. My system renders this hidden bit. This results in the jail bars every 8 pixels. Here are some solutions that I explored. One, rebuilding the video circuit to only output 7 pixels per read, but it's definitely not trivial and will require going back to the drawing board. Two, I thought about changing the load runner code to work with 320 pixels. This moves further away from the Apple II video format, which will make other ports harder. I'd like to keep it as close to the Apple II format as possible. Three, I thought about pulling the A input in the shift register to zero. Instead of white bars, this would have black bars, a gap every eight pixels. Less distracting than white bars, but still not great. What I ended up doing is bending up the A input on the shift register and soldering a bodge wire from the A to the B input. Uh, this causes the eighth pixel to match the seventh. Every eight pixels, two of the pixels are the same. Not perfect, but definitely playable for now. In the end, I'll probably rebuild the circuit. So what's next? Other than better Apple II graphics compatibility, storage, uh, more games, I've got my eye on Ultima 4, and sound. I have lots more to share on the Badger 6502 Pico emulator project. I considered putting it into this video, but I think there's enough there to warrant its own video. If you like the content, please like, subscribe, and comment. I'm really interested in your thoughts and ideas. Well, that's it for now.